The following podcast is an exclusive presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Thank you for coming to the Project Entertainment Network store. Please place your order. A good choice. A t-shirt for the horror show with Brian Keane. A Manta Method coffee mug. There's more. A Necrocast Icon hoodie. That's sharp. But why on earth would you want bizong leggings? Wait, are you Mr. Frank? The Project Entertainment Network store, stacked with goodies from all your favorite podcasts. T-shirts, goodies, mugs and more. www.projectentertainmentnetwork.com There shall come a podcast. A podcast like no other. Defenders Dialogue with Brian Keane and Christopher Golden. Marvel Comics' original superhero non-team convenes once again. The Incredible Hulk, the Savage Submariner, the Master of the Mystic Arts, Doctor Strange, and a dynamic supporting cast of Marvel superheroes battle against evil as the Defenders. Without further ado, true believers, here's your hosts, Brian Keane and Christopher Golden, Excelsior! And welcome back once again, True Believers, to Defenders Dialogue. I'm Brian Keane, flying solo this week. I know we were supposed to talk about Iron Man Annual Number 4. Iron Man Annual Number 4, which ties in to the champions. Uh, We were going to have Tom Snagowski join us as a special guest for that episode. Uh, Chris and I decided we are going to table that until next week. So you will get to hear that discussion next week, and uh, Snagoski will be joining us on the air for that. Today, we're going to talk about a moment in Marvel Comics history that I bet a bunch of you don't know about. Uh, And it ties into both the Defenders and the Champions, because we're going to focus on somebody who's been a member of both teams, uh, and that is, of course, Ghost Rider. Um... Well, I say, of course, I guess it could also be Angel or Iceman or Black Goliath or Hercules. Uh, all of them showed up uh, as members of the Defenders at one point. But no, we're going we're gonna to talk about Ghost Rider. Uh, and we're going to talk about Jesus Christ, uh, the character as he exists in the Marvel Comics universe. Yes, believe it or not, Jesus Christ, the Judeo-Christian Uh, Jesus Christ uh, is, in fact, a superhero in the Marvel Comics universe of the 70s. Um, And if you don't believe me, well, let's examine that. He appears in Ghost Rider issue number nine. Now, that was written by Tony Isabella, who also, of course, created the Champions. Did, uh, what, the first seven issues of the Champions before uh, Bill Mantlo took over. Um, So, yeah, we... uh, First, we're going to go to a, an interview with Jerry's Humble Opinions. It's a it's a blog interview uh, in which Jerry Smith talked to uh, Tony Isabella. Um, you know, he uh, he asks him. Uh, Jerry asks him. He says, in issue number two, the rulers of the dead who make a deal with Hades are portrayed, including Mephisto and a standard Christian depiction of Satan. Uh, now, longtime listeners of the show will remember, of course. Uh, Satan's appearances from Defenders, J.M. DiMatteis's classic six-fingered hand saga. Uh, still, I think the the one of the best, if not the best, uh, Marvel storyline ever done. Um, so you know, back in the the Bronze Age, Satan they Marvel depicted him. Um, you know, he, they they would not use him now. I don't think, but. Uh, so, yeah, Jerry says, you know, uh, and Jerry agrees. He, he, he points out Marvel would never show Satan now. Was there ever any pushback from anyone due to depicting Satan himself in a comic story or having Ghost Rider gain his powers from a little literal deal with the devil? And Tony Isabella responds. He says, I'm sure there was some small bit of pushback when Son of Satan was introduced because of Satan being part of the title and all. But Ghost Rider was just the latest in a fairly long history of stories about humans making deals with the devil and finding out the devil doesn't play fair. I never experienced any pushback on my work. When I introduced the character of the friend into Ghost Rider, 
I got favorable responses from ministers and other people of faith, end quote. So let's talk about that character, the friend. Uh, the friend first appears in Ghost Rider issue nine, in which Johnny Blaze is having the first of many final showdowns with Satan. Um, and just when it seems like, you know, Satan's going to triumph over the Ghost Rider, this hippie looking dude shows up and, uh, you know, he's got a beard, he's got long hair, he's, he's dressed in the clothes of the time. Um, and he basically saves Johnny Blaze. Uh, he says, Johnny Blaze's soul is beyond you, Satan. He has earned his second chance. Uh, and Satan promises, the mortal has not yet seen the end of this. I promise you that. Um, the friend was, in fact, Jesus Christ. Now, now how did this come about? Um, well, Tony Isabella, in another interview, uh, you know, he, he goes on to talk about that. Um, he talks about, you know, when he added this element of Christianity to oppose Satan uh, in the Ghost Rider comic. He, he remember, uh, I just said a moment ago, he was getting favorable responses from, from ministers and clergy. Uh, that encouraged him, quote, to expand on my original plans. From that point on, I began to consider my stories from a fairness standpoint as well. If we were going to represent hell in our comics, shouldn't we also represent heaven? I was discussing the book with a group of writers, uh, confident that one way or another, I would get Johnny out of this jam. That's when Steve Gerber quipped, why don't you have God save them? I laughed and then went, wait a minute, that's just crazy enough to work. I pitched it to editor Roy Thomas, laying out where I'd be going with the character after that, and he approved what would end up being a two-year-long story arc, end quote. Um, so, yeah, I mean, now, when we've had Scott Edelman on the show, he's talked about those old Marvel writers' meetings of the 70s. It's, it's not taking place in, you know, the boardroom at Marvel headquarters. No, they'd get together at the bar or a diner, and they just talk about this stuff all night. And uh, I have to wonder if Scott was at this particular meeting when they were when they were discussing about this. But yeah, once again, all roads lead back to Steve Gerber. Uh, you know, here we have Gerber, who was writing the Defenders at the time, uh, suggesting, you know, why don't you have God save the Ghost Rider? And that leads Tony Isabella to create Jesus Christ as the friend. Um, so he said it was a two year long story arc and it is some of the heights of that. Um, as we said, he first appears in Ghost Rider issue number nine. Um, issue number 15 is a, a big turning point. Uh, one of Ghost Rider's, uh, super villains is, is this character known as the Orb. Um, <laughs> he's a, a rival biker with this giant eyeball for a head. Uh, very cool visual. I hope that at some point Chris and I get a chance to talk about him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry for that. With with Chris not here, I'm doing all the talking and my throat needs a workout. One moment. Um, so yeah. The orb has been fucking with Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider's had enough. And uh, he's just about to kill the orb. You know, he's, uh, he's about to commit murder. Uh, and then the friend shows up and stops him, and, uh, you know, he urges Johnny to con reconsider the decision. Uh, Ghost Rider does. He spares the orb's life. Um, you know, Johnny leaves just feeling ashamed of his murderous rage. Uh, but, you know, the friend continues to work with him on redemption. Um, in Ghost Rider issue 18, uh, there's a... a an entity known as the Challenger. Um, and he's been giving Johnny a series of ordeals. Uh, basically, Johnny has to face these ordeals to save the soul of Katie Milner, who was a supporting cast member in the Ghost Rider series. Um, you know, Ghost Rider is then treated to a series of highly disturbing illusions, uh, including one of the friend being crucified by all of Ghost Rider's former adversaries. Um, you know, then we get to issue 19, the controversial issue 19. Um, let's go back to Tony Isabella in that interview with Jerry's Humble Opinions. He says, I never experienced any pushback on my work. 
When I introduced the friend in the Ghost Rider, I got favorable responses from ministers and other people of faith. It wasn't until Jim Shooter changed my ending for that story that I received any negatives. I spent a lot of time explaining to fans that Lurch Boy fucked with my story. End quote. Uh, Lurch Boy is Tony Isabella's nickname for Jim Shooter. Obviously, no love lost there. But let's let's go deeper than that. Um, you know what what actually happened there? Well, let's uh, let's go back to another interview. Um, Isabella, you know, as he said, he had he had pitched the idea of Jesus being a supporting character to Roy Thomas, and Roy Thomas approved it. He was the editor at the time. Uh, Isabella then goes on to say, quote. Len Wein and Marv Wolfman, who succeeded Roy as editor, were also very supportive of my plans. Unfortunately, when it came time for the conclusion of the story arc to go to press, the ever-arrogant, ever-overrated, and just plain nasty Jim Shooter decided to change the ending, and by doing so, the entire thrust of the story I had so painstakingly constructed. I've been explaining and apologizing for my last issue ever since, Shooter truly turned a silk purse into a sow's ear. End quote. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty on the nose there. Um, and as we said, that happened in Ghost Rider 19. Um, you know, Tony Isabella, obviously, he took issue with that. Uh, Shooter ended up doing the rewrites on that issue because Tony Isabella refused. Um, he actually had some of the art partially redrawn as well. Uh, this will remind many of our our millennial listeners of the Spider-Man One More Day controversy in which uh, Mephisto, a manifestation of Satan in the Marvel Universe, uh, undoes the, the marriage of Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. Um, and, you know, that was editorial overreach as well uh the writer j michael straczynski actually um had big issues with that uh some of it was rewritten i believe some of it ended up being redrawn um so parallels but yeah you know because of steve gerber defenders creator or not creator but you know uh inarguably the writer that put the defenders on the map um jesus christ was a supporting character in the Ghost Rider. And uh, it's worth pointing out that Gerber himself used Jesus as a character in uh, not the original Howard the Duck series, but when Marvel relaunched it as a Marvel Max series in the 90s, uh, with Gerber writing it, uh, Jesus Christ is a character in Howard the Duck issues number five and six. So there you have it. That's the show this week. Short, sweet, just a little bit of filler, a fun little fact, um, something I'm fascinated by. Next week, Chris will be back. Uh, Tom Snagowski will be joining us. We will be talking about Iron Man, ish, annual number four, uh, featuring the champions, Iron Man, and my favorite Marvel villain of all time, MODOK. Uh, in the meantime, if you enjoy Defender's Dialogue, you might also enjoy my podcast, The Horror Show with Brian Keene. Every week, uh, I interview the biggest names in the horror genre, authors, directors, screenwriters, actors, actresses, video game designers, comic book writers and artists, you name it, uh, we have them on. We also talk about news and happenings in the industry and the genre. Um, that's available wherever you listen to Defender's Dialogue. If you are enjoying Defender's Dialogue and uh, you're not reading along at home and you say, man, I, I wish I could see some of these crazy panels that they talk about, you can do that. Go to my YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube, type in Brian Keene. And my YouTube channel will pop up. And uh, there are two playlists for Defender's Dialogue. There's Season 1, which encompasses the entire Defender's storyline. Uh, and then there's Season 2, uh, which currently features me and Chris's uh, review of the Gargoyle miniseries. Uh, the Defender stuff that happened after the original run. And, of course, now the Champions. Um, so, yeah. Brian Keene, K-E-E-N-E -E -E on YouTube. Um, anyway, thanks for listening. If Chris was here, as he would say, excelsior, true believers. We'll see you next week. You're listening to American Top 40. More tragedy in the news today.
<laughs> Kim Kardashian has a new baby. What the hell? There's nothing good to listen to. Hey, wait, what's this? You gotta roll that out. See, it makes me do weird things. I don't like it. God damn it. I'd be going down on myself. Shit. Hey, guys, it's Bill. Mick. Maya. And Junior. From the Unsupervised Podcast. Check us out every Thursday on the Project Entertainment Network. Take a break from the stress of the world and come have a laugh with or at us. Bill. (laughs) My Favorite Story, a podcast author anthology featuring short fiction from the hosts of the Project Entertainment Network shows. Three guys with beards. Jim Moore. Jonathan Maybar. And Chris Golden. Tom Clark from Necrocast, it on. Brian Keene of the Horror Soul. Chuck Buddha. And Armand Rosamilia of the Mando Method. Mary San Giovanni of Cosmic Shenanigans. Jay Wilbin from Matters of Faith. John Urban Sick of Ink Stains. Bill Zung's Mr. Frank. Available on Kindle and in paperback and through the Project Entertainment Network store. www.projectentertainmentnetwork.com This has been an exclusive presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.